Άγιος Αθανάτος ελέησον ημάς. Blessed is our God always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are the undefiled on their way, Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your rules of life, Alleluia. My soul fainted because of its listlessness. Establish me in your words. Alleluia. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to greediness. Alleluia. Exceeding less, exceedingly distressed am I because of the sinful men forsake and disregard your law, Alleluia. I am a true companion of all who love and fear you and keep and honor your commandments, Alleluia. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages, Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Madeline, who has fallen asleep, for the forgiveness of her errors, both voluntary and involuntary. That the Lord God will place her soul with a righteous rest and will grant to her the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, the forgiveness of her sins. <laughs> Let us ask of Christ, our mortal King and God. Grant this, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, Madeline, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we give glory with your beginningless Father, your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Your own hands created me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Be merciful to me, O Lord. I have not forgotten your rules of life. Be merciful to me, O Lord. I am your save me, for I search your ordinances. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I incline my heart to do your ordinances forever for a reward. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I have inclined my heart always to follow your rules of life. As my true reward, be merciful to me, O Lord. My Lord, for you to act, the time is upon us, for they have transgressed your laws. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us pray. 
pray to the Lord. Lord have Lord, mercy. Come. You are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, Madeline, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory, together with your beginningless Father, and your all holy, good, and life giving spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Theodore. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And have mercy on me, Alleluia. Look graciously upon me, and have mercy on me, as you do for those who love your name, Alleluia. Small and obscure though I am, and utterly despised, your rules of life I have not forgotten, Alleluia. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your mercy. Give me life according to your judgments, Alleluia. Rulers persecuted me without cause, but my heart feared because of your words, Alleluia. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and your ordinances shall assist me, Alleluia. I wandered as sheep who lost the trodden path. Come and seek your servant, Lord, for your commandments I have not forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Madeline who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God, and to you we ascribe glory together with your beginningless Father in your all-holy good and life-giving spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statute. The company of saints has found the source of life and the entrance to paradise. May I find it to the way through repentance, for I am the lost and stray sheep. Bring me back to you, O Savior, and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. You who of old created me out of nothing in your divine image and returned me back to dust from which I had been made for my disobedience. To your own likeness again restore me and that ancient beauty I pray return to me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. I am an image of your ineffable glory. Though I bear the scars of my transgressions, on your creation, Master, take pity, and cleanse me by your compassion. Grant me the homeland for which I long, 
And once again make me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Give rest, O God, to your servant and place her in paradise, where the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine as the stars of heaven. To your departed servant give rest, O Lord, and forgive all her offenses. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the tri-brilliant brilliance of the God's head singleness. Let us praise reverently, chanting, Holy are you, the beginningless Father, the co-beginningless Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shine upon us in faith who worship you and deliver us all from the eternal fire. Now and forever <clears throat> and to the ages of ages, amen. Hail, Holy One, who bore God in the flesh so that all of us could be saved. Through you the human race has found salvation. Through you may we find paradise. O pure and blessed Theotokos. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. remains unmixed with grief what glory endures immovable on earth all things are feebler than shadows all more elusive than dreams in a single moment all are supplanted by death but in the light O Christ of your countenance and the sweetness of your comeliness rest the one you have taken like a true friend of man like a flower it withers, and like a dream it vanishes and dissolves away every human being. Yet at the call of the trumpet all the dead, as if in an earthquake, shall rise to meet you, O Christ our God. At that time, Lord, rest the spirit of the one you have taken from us in the dwelling of the saints, O Christ our God. Woe to me! What agony does the soul endure when the body is separated? Woe to me! How many tears it then sheds, but finds no one to show mercy. It turns its eyes to the angels pleadingly, but its supplications go unheeded. It stretches out its hands to its fellow men, but finds no one to come to its aid. Therefore, my beloved brethren, realizing the shortness of this life, let us ask of Christ rest for the departed and for our souls his great mercy. Vanity is everything human which after death exists no more. Wealth does not remain, glory does not go with us. For when death arrives, all these disappear. Therefore let us cry to Christ, the immortal King, grant rest to the one departed from us. There we're glad are all who have their dwelling in you. Indeed, indeed how awesome of our death is the mystery. 
how the soul is forcibly severed from its harmonious union with the body, and of their coexistence this natural bond by divine will is broken. Therefore, we implore you, give rest to the departed one in the dwelling of the righteous, O giver of life and lover of mankind. I brought to mind the prophet who cried, I am earth and dust. And again I looked into the graves and beheld the naked bones and said, to whom could these belong? King or soldier, rich or poor, righteous or sinner. But give rest to your servant, O Lord, among the just as a gracious and loving God. My origin and my very being come from your creative command. For at your will you fashion me a living creature from invisible, invisible natures. From the earth my body you formed, and you gave me a soul by your breath, the life-giving and divine. So Christ, your servant, rests in the land of the living and the dwellings of the righteous. O Savior and life-giver, to the one you transferred from this fleeting life, grant rest as she cries out, Glory to you, O Lord. I weep and I lament when I come face to face with death and see lying in the graves our beauty, which was made in the image of God, disfigured and glorious, all its form destroyed. How strange indeed that this lamentable mystery should happen to us, how we gave into corruption and became partners with death. Indeed, as written by the command of God, who grants to all the departed eternal rest. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, O Lord, your death gave rise to immortality. For if you had not been enclosed in a tomb, then paradise would not have been open. Therefore grant repose to the departed in your love for humanity. Both now, both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. O pure virgin, you are the gate of the Logos and the mother of our God. Pray for our salvation. Blessed be the road that you travel on today because for you has been prepared a place of eternal rest. Blessed always be the road that you travel on today because for you Let us be attentive. To you, O Lord, I cry, O my God, may you not pass over me in silence. May you never be silent to me, else I would become like them who go down into the pit. Wisdom. The reading is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, we could not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as those who do those do who have not hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, 
Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Peace be with you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. With some arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto you all. And to your spirit. The Lord said to the Jews who came near to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing of my own authority. As I hear, I judge because my judgment is just. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Ya Rabbulham, Ya Rabbulham, Ya Rabbulham. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Madeline, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all her errors, both voluntary and involuntary. Ya Rabbulham, Ya Rabbulham, Ya Rabbulham. That the Lord God will place her soul with a righteous rest and will grant to her the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. Grant this, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death, crushed the power of the devil, and granted life to your world, do you yourself, O Lord, give rest to the soul of your servant, Madeline, who has fallen asleep in a place of light, a place of green pasture, a place of repose where there is no grief, sorrow, or mourning. Forgive every sin she has committed in word or deed or thought, for you are a good God and love mankind. For there is no one who lives and does not sin, only you are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, Madeline, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory, together with your beginningless Father, and your all-holy, good and life-giving Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Madeline, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we give glory, together with your beginningless Father, your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Madeline, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory, together with your beginningless Father and your all holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, God, our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead and has dominion over the living and the dead as immortal King, through the intercessions of his most pure and holy Mother, of the holy, glorious, and all-praised apostles, of our holy, God-bearing fathers, 
of the holy and glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy and righteous friend, Lazarus, who was four days in the tomb, and of all of the saints, assigned to the dwelling place of the righteous, the soul of his servant, Madeline, who has departed from us, granted rest in the bosom of Abraham, number it among the righteous, and may he also have us on, save, have mercy on us and save us, for he is a good God who loves mankind. sister. About 22 years ago or something, when I first came down, Madeline and Ted were uh, the first that I met. And it was at that time that I realized what wonderful people they were. They were people that were really greater than excellent. They're people that had their faith in God. They maintained their faith in God. They raised their families to be faithful in God. And they were extremely, extremely generous Wherever there was a need, they were always there to help fill it. And our Lord, in return, blessed them a hundredfold. And they were truly, and have been truly, a blessed couple and a blessing for Charlotte. Not only the Orthodox, not only the Christians, but all of Charlotte all of the Eastern Mediterranean uh, that have come to this country as immigrants. Ted and Madeline were a, the American dream come to fruition. They were a couple that got married, I believe right after World War II. And they had their children and their family. And of course, we can see from their children that they bore good fruit and they raised their families in the right and correct way as they themselves lived their lives. And I know that we're celebrating Madeline and I keep bringing Ted into it because in my mind, I can't separate the two. And now, even though they had a temporary separation, is they're finally back together again. And someday we will also be with them. 
It's a beautiful thing when you can have a family member live their last hours at home around their loved ones. Because we have sterilized this process by having our loved ones somewhere else. And then someone calls us and says, well, they've passed. But when you're with them, you come to the realization that they come to a point where they are between worlds, as I was telling Jody the other day. And this is something that's very common amongst people. But unfortunately, we don't have the witnesses to that. But it's between, we call it being between worlds, where you see the other side, you see those who are on the other side. You even can communicate with those that are on the other side. And then you come back to this world and you tell your loved ones that you saw these people. And that's exactly what Madeline did, like so many others. This is something that should give us a lot of hope, not only the hope that our Lord gives us, but when we see this type of event taking place, when we see someone who is actually in both worlds at the same time as Madeline was, says this is something that is very important for us and we should always remember it because it should give us hope and it should give us a greater faith. As Christians, especially as Orthodox Christians, we don't believe in death. As a matter of fact, we should really try to refrain from using the word death. That's not a, a proper word for us because there's only life for us because they have left one life and they have gone into another life. We also will leave this life and enter into another life. When I came here till today, it seems like the blinking of an eye. That's how quickly I feel that the time has passed. In even my life, I look, it's like the blinking of an eye. Because wherever we're at, our past is nothing. But our future is everything. And one day, in the blinking of an eye, we will be with Madeline and with all of our loved ones and all of those faithful that have gone before us in the blink of an eye, just as Madeline, in the blink of an eye, left this life and entered and was reborn into the new life which God has prepared for us. This is not the life that God wanted for us. We chose this life in the garden. We chose to experience good and evil. And God, being the loving person he is, allowed us our choice. But what God has prepared for us and what God wanted for us is paradise. So he came again. He manifested himself as a human being so that he could show us that there is the hope, there is another life. He was killed and he died and he was resurrected so that we might understand better that we too, in the blink of an eye, will be reborn into where our Lord had prepared for us since the beginning of time, that is paradise. We think of paradise as some, I don't know, the equatorial place with beautiful trees and flowers and 
You know, we can only try to imagine a paradise on earth, but the paradise that God has prepared for us far surpasses anything that we can even vaguely imagine on this earth. This is a day that we should be feeling joy for Madeline, feeling joy for our loved ones who have gone before us, because it is the joy they have finally reached that point to where they can be reborn. Like a child that's in a womb, we sit in this life waiting to be born. And today, or a couple of days ago, Madeline was reborn into paradise. And this is what is waiting all of us who have faith in our Lord. So I pray that the family, and I know that the family is very, very strong in the faith. And I know that you will grieve, you will miss Madeline as I miss Madeline. In fact, when I came out to greet the family, I was looking for Madeline to be sitting here. I, I don't even know why, but I just, you know how an old brain works. Well, maybe you don't, but that's the way an old brain works. And I was looking for Madeline, and uh, it's like I couldn't or didn't believe that, you know, she had, she had fallen asleep. But as Christians, we should grieve, but we should grieve with joy, and we should grieve with hope, and with the anticipation that we will also follow. No one here, no one will not follow Madeline. We will all follow. We are all on the path, some ahead of others. We don't know where we are on the path. But when we finally joyfully are reunited with all of our loved ones. It says that's when we really and truly give glory to God. So to all of us who have hope, to all of us who have faith, I hope that one day we will have a wonderful reunion with our friend and our relative, Madeline and Ted and all of our loved ones. May God bless you and make your grief short and your joy great. This time I'd like to invite someone that's going to be say a few words. Matthew. Matthew. My name is Matt Solomon, Madeline's oldest grandson, and she is my situ, which is Arabic for grandmother. As a child, Ted and Madeline's house was the ultimate playground for me, my brothers, and my sister. Their house was the one place we never heard the word no, and it was the place where we called the shots, literally. From making campfires in the front yard, shooting off fireworks whenever we wanted, chocolate sundaes with unlimited toppings, making popcorn together, eating sweet cereals until the roof of our mouths were raw. Their house was our carowinds, and they made us feel like the most special kids in the world. Madeline was a woman well ahead of her time. She was smart, outspoken, driven, strong-willed, selfless, nurturing, always led by example in business and in her personal life. This was far from the norm for a woman in a leadership role back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, <clears throat> especially for someone who worked in business and managed a very busy household. She had a way with her that let Ted feel like he was in control <laughs> while giving him the respect to be the figurehead which led to a lot of his success. I learned later that Madeline's influence over his success was overwhelming. However, it was never known or publicized as this was her way of respecting him and keeping him as the face and leader 
of the family and the business, which she was perfectly okay with. After he passed, she took more of a leadership role that she cared to take on. Her style was different from Ted's. She asked a lot of questions, keeping tabs on everything and everyone, and guided people in her own unique, delicate way. Madeline's oldest, my dad, TJ's parenting style was different from Ted's in the sense that he didn't always tell unsolicited stories, riddled with lessons. He let me learn from my mistakes, which as a young man, I was learning at a rapid pace. When my old man spoke, I listened. I recall a day when everyone was going over to my grandparents, and instead I wanted to hang with my buddies. I remember my dad looked at me and said, you know, grandparents aren't around forever. He was right. And as much as I thought Ted and Malin were immortal, they weren't. Ever since that day, I never missed a chance to go see my grandparents. And taking my dad's advice after college, I took the opportunity to go work for Ted and Madeline. And I learned all things business. I worked for Ted and Malin for over 15 years and learned a ton of valuable lessons about sales, business in general, people, the value of a dollar, and the importance of strong business relationships. After Ted passed away, it was clear he wasn't the only source of these valuable lessons. While he may have been the one to vocalize the message, it was Madeline who instilled the principles. They were a team. They spoke about everything. And I mean everything on a daily basis. She knew about every major deal we were working, which clients had passed through invoices that needed attention. She knew about every employee, from the ones celebrating milestones to people that were going through a rough patch and needed our help. Malin was Ted's ultimate sounding board, and she helped him process things in a way that he would, only he would articulate in his own unique way. Many times the lesson was wrapped in a story from his past, while other times the lesson was delivered using sheer blunt verbal force. Many people in the room have been at the end of those messages, and many of those lessons from Ted came with a mild case of PTSD. But with that PTSD came some lessons that made us all better people. Mal didn't always agree with Ted's unconventional delivery methods, but she must always agree with the principle, the moral, and the logic behind the message. It was only after Ted passed that I realized just how impactful Malin's role within the company really was. And just like I did with Ted, I could lean on her for guidance and support in making business decisions big and small. In addition to being a businesswoman, supportive wife, devoted mother, Madeline always had a way of building you up whether you needed it or not. She loved to always be in the know about people in her circle. After every visit, she knew everything going on in my life, and I knew everything about everyone in her circle. She rarely wanted to speak about herself unless it was a way that she could help. In my 20s, she always liked to know who I was dating, and of course, I never introduced her to anyone unless it was serious. In one particular case, she knew the girl that I was dating. After a short time with this girl, I knew she was not for me. I didn't have the heart to tell my situ it didn't work out as she asked about this girl every time I saw her, which drove me crazy. Finally, after getting sick of addressing the relationship status of this young girl, I finally told her, Situ, I just don't think she likes me. Situ goes on to say with an edge and without any hesitation, that girl couldn't shine your shoes, honey. <laughs> she always had my back. Mal was very interested in who would become my future wife as she wanted to make sure that I found someone that would hold all the right attributes. She wanted me to be with someone smart, outspoken, driven, selfless, strong-willed, nurturing. Sound familiar? There's something to be said for Mal's influence with the women in our family. Just look around. And you'll see Mal's traits in her daughters, her granddaughters, great-granddaughters, and even her in-laws. And when it comes to grandchildren, my dad said being a grandparent is the greatest joy in the world. Sutu would say that being a great grandparent is heaven on earth. I would say watching my children, I would say watching my children get to know her great grandmother was truly a blessing. If her happiness with them is any indicator of her happiness today, we can rest assured that she's exactly where she wants to be. 
Mallet's influence in our family will remain strong and be carried on for many generations to come. We love you, Sutu. You will be missed and never forgotten. Thank you. This time, if you have already greeted the family, no, we're going to stay. Everybody's going to stay and follow up. I, I was my old brain again. Okay, so uh, if you have not greeted the family yet, would you come by now, pay your last respects, or greet the family?